trouble making the video because somehow my computer audio wasn't working. I'm doing this through Zoom and I'm saving the file on my computer so I can post it to YouTube later on. So hopefully this will work. Now, of course, you know, go ahead and read the background material here. And I'm just going to jump down uh, to some of the questions, right? So remember, um, we're looking at contour lines in these first couple of figures. And, um, and some important things to understand here are the, the contour interval, which is the, the uh, elevation between adjacent contours. And then also there is the, um, the index contour. And the index contour would be one that uh, is bold faced and labeled. So if we kind of zoom in, let's see if I um, bring this down a little bit. Let's zoom in here a little bit. You can see these bold faced contours here. In fact, in fact, that's a 600 foot contour line. Um, let's see, 600, I guess this would be, well, maybe that's 800. No, the, oh yeah, there's 700 right there. And there's 800 and then there's 900. So those are the bold face index contours and they're usually labeled with the elevation. And then the contour lines between them, uh, those are the contours. And when we determine the contour interval, we wanna figure out the elevation between adjacent contours. For example, if I had a, a point uh, right here between these two contour lines, what would be the elevation? So to figure out that contour interval, the way I do it is I, I start off at 700 here and, and it's like going upstairs. I take one, two, three, four, five steps uh, to get up to 800 feet. So in other words, I cover 100 feet from 700 to 800 in five steps. So each step must be 20 feet. So the contour interval of this map here is 20 feet. So if I was trying to figure out the elevation of a point between these two contours, well, that'd be 700, 720, 740, 760. That's 780 there. So maybe it's 770, right? So you'd make an educated guess there. So that's an important thing about determining the contour interval. All right, so let's um, let's back out a little bit here. All right, so let's look at some of these questions. So we're looking at this uh, digital elevation model uh, and that map figure four, which is uh, the map of Topps Field, um, yeah, Topps Field, Maine, and the digital elevation model is this guy. So this basically is sort of like a shaded relief um, map that shows the topography. Here, we're showing that topography with contour lines, right? So the first question here is asking us to uh, find a flat place on the digital elevation model and uh, that same area on the topographic map, figure three. So if we go down here to the digital elevation, you can see this area out over here in the northwest part of the map is pretty flat, right? And if we go up here to our topo map, we find that area over here. So one thing to notice is, See how widely spaced the contour lines are? Very widely spaced. Whereas when you're going on a hill, like this uh, Faroe Mountain, the contour lines are much more closely spaced. So the closer spacing of contour lines, the steeper, the steeper the slope. And I think that's what they're gonna ask us to, um, to yeah. So basically on, on this question one, it's asking about the spacing. So compare the spacing between gentle and steep slopes. So basically, a, a steep slopes, closely spaced contour lines, gentle slopes, more widely spaced uh, contour lines. Now let's look at the slopes of on both sides of Faro Mountain. And so in um, if we look at the slopes, you can see they're they're it's pretty steep on this northwest side, but the southeast side is very steep. It's almost like a cliff, right? These are very close together. So it's almost like a drop off here, right? So I guess they want you to say something to that effect in words here. So are the slopes equally? No, they're not. It's steeper on the southeast side, right? And the reasoning is the, the contour lines on that southeast side are much more closely spaced than they are on the northwest side. And so again, you would say, describe the slopes of Faroe Mountain. So it's, it's steep on the northwest, and then it's a drop off on the southeast, very steep on the southeast, right? Then let's think about these nested contours. Really, they're they're talking about these 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 curves, right? And they define hills, right? So like a round hill, you'd have round contours. The more oblong or elongated, con you know, uh, hill uh, 
contra lines would be a, a ridge, for example. And so here, I think they're going to ask us to, to find a few, let's see, nested contours, and then want to find those on the digital elevation model. So if we if we look, uh, in fact, they got this one pointed out here, and we could probably find that one. Uh, so one thing I'm looking at, looking at this one, and there's that one and that one there. So if we go down to our elevation model, yeah, so you can see that hill, that hill, and that hill. So those are the ones. In fact, let's let's find this one on the map as well. And um, let's see, it's going to be... It's going to be this one right here. <laughs> yeah, because I see the steep slope here, and then I see that that round hill down over here. So, yeah, I see that steep slope and that round hill over here. At least that's what it seems to be. Uh, now, if we, let's see, what are they? So question A, uh, look at the white box in figure three, the contour interval, 20 feet. So we already figured that out, right? We did that by, by counting the steps. Remember, we did that earlier. What type of, so obviously the nested contours indicate a hilltop or a ridge, depending on whether they're more oval shape or more round. And then mark four similar features with colored dots on the top of the map. So what you want to do, and if you're using a Mac here, you can take um, the squiggly tool here. And here is, you know, we can, we can define Hunt Ridge. Uh, uh, Cane Ridge over here is another one. Uh, and then maybe um, we'll do this one here. Well, it wants four, right? So let's do four right there. Um, all right, let's actually let me, let me change something here. Let's let's make no um, no fill here. Just that way we can see through the map here. All right, so now that we've done our four ridges or similar hills. Uh, we can we did number letter C. Let's see what's down here. So now this is talking about benchmarks uh, and um, well here the index contours and contour interval, right? So we're we already explained that, but the benchmarks are either labeled by an X with the elevation next to it or a or a triangle here. Uh, so what do they have on on this topo map here? Let's zoom in a little bit so we can see better. So it looks like they have. Um, in fact, some just say BM for benchmark. So benchmark 746, right? So in this case, they're just saying benchmark, right? Uh, and here they just have an X, right? With no triangle or benchmark. And here's another uh, X right there. Although 640, 6841, yeah, 6841, that's a, or six six hundred and eighty four. Uh, I'm not sure what that is, but look, because that's 700 and that's 600. Yeah, so 684 would be that. So again, I'm looking at the contour lines that kind of help me out. I know the 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 detail in this map isn't as good. It's kind of blurry here, but we can still make this out. So on our map, looks like they actually use the word use the letters BM for benchmark. Okay, now let's zoom out a little bit. Okay, so we did that already. Okay, um, and then what are we doing over here? This is just talking about uh, sort of elevate. In fact, we're gonna get to these later. These are what we call um, topographic um, profiles, uh, kind of a landscape view, what you'd expect to see on a map. And the way these work out is whatever, wherever a line of section, in this case, this, this line here, wherever a contra line intersects that line of section, we would label its elevation, right? And you can see here, as we're going into this valley, the line of section and the contour intersect here, the 350 contour, we'd have 350 feet and then it's 300 to, so it's basically, it, you're showing that topography, right? Uh, there's a ridge here and you see that there's 500s repeat because you're going up, you're not, in fact, here you can see it's a contour interval of 50 feet, right? So these are the contour lines over here. So 50 foot contour, you don't get to 550, but you get above 500, but then you drop back down and on your way down, you're gonna encounter that 500 again, right? As you're going down the slope there. Another important contour uh, is this, this hatchers. So some contour lines have hatchers and the hatcher lines indicate a depression. And in this case, as you're going up the hill, you'll see that we, we hit 300 here. We're gonna go a little bit higher than 300, Note again that the, the contour interval is, is 50 feet, right? 50 feet between adjacent contours. So as we go to three, so there's 250, 300, 
we're going to get not as high as 350, but then we got to go back down. We start going down into this whole depression here. So we're going to encounter that 300. So one of the rules we have, and um, I'm sure I have it somewhere in the text here, but the rule, I'll say it here, is that uh, the, the elevation of that first depression contour, that first hatchered contour is going to be the same as the preceding lower elevation contour. So that's why the 300 repeats, because you go up, and then you hit 300, you go a little higher than that, but then you come down and the, under the depression, you hit 300 again, right? So, so always that first hatchered contour will be the same elevation as a preceding lower elevation. So here we're looking at that figure six. So let, we're looking at the figure. So what would be the highest point on the rim? So again, we know that the interval is 50 feet here, right? Um, we have to go above 300. So, I mean, you could, and, and based on the slope, I would say maybe 330, 335, you know, and then we start dropping down. So again, I'm just making an educated guess based on the slope, but it has to be less than 350 and more than 300. So 325 may be the number, right? So um, in fact, I, uh, in fact, they didn't even take this higher than 300. So yeah, maybe 325 or something. Uh, would be the highest point on figure six. And again, we're estimating that point based on the 50-foot contour interval and, and the, the general slope of this. Um, it's, you see, it's kind of a gradual. The contour lines are, are about equally spaced. So it's a, it's, it's a consistent slope, right? And so we're kind of just extrapolating to get that 325, 330. Um, what is elevation of the lowest point in the crater? So again, by the same token, you see we go... We, we go past down 300, down to 250, and it kind of flattens out. So it's probably not much deeper than 250, but maybe 240, right? 240 would be a good number. So you go down to 250, then 240, and then you go back to 250, and then back up to 300, and then you're over the rim and out, right? So maybe two, um, 240 would be a good number there. And again, we're doing it by um, extrapolation. So now we got this, this letter X here by this lake on the both the digital elevation model and the map. They want to figure out the elevation of that letter X as close as possible in feet. So if we go up here to the digital elevation model, we see there's a little X um, over here in the, in the corner of the map. I guess, uh, yeah, here, I got to do this so I can see it. There it is right there. And then if we go up to our map, that's, the, well, there's an X right there and there's that lake. Unfortunately, the lake is not labeled, but you can clearly see the X right there. And so what would be the elevation of that point? So let's zoom in as best we can into, um, I'm gonna move this down a little bit. There we go. There we go. And then I can access the zoom button here. There we go. Now I can access the bottom here. All right. So what do we got? We got 440. So this contour line is actually labeled as 440. And remember the interval is 20 feet on this map. 440. So that's this must be four. Well, in fact, which way? So this is 500. So it looks like this is higher elevation here. So 440, this must be 420. Yeah, it's 420 right there. And then, um, looks like, is there a contrast? I can't, I can't really make, so I would say something less than 420, maybe 410, right? So 410 would probably be a good educated guest on the elevation of that, of that letter X, right? So let's go back to our questions here. So about 410 would go right here. And then let's find Hunt Ridge and figure out what the highest elevation and also the high, uh, highest elevation on Faro Mountain. So Hunt Ridge and Faro Mountain. So we'll go back up to our topo map. And I see Hunt, um, Hunt Ridge is here. We, in fact, that's the one, one of the ones we, we were annotating earlier. And if we move over a little bit here, we see that we got the 700 foot. In fact, let me get rid of this thing so we can see it better. We have the 700 foot contour, 720, 
right? Because they were going up the hill. So maybe 7.30, right? It's not 7.40 because otherwise we'd see a contra line. So I would estimate maybe 7, 7, uh, yeah, but 7.30 or so would be a good number for Hunt Ridge. Then for Ferro Mountain, Ferro Mountain's kind of a broader, longer and and we got we got 900 here so 920 940 960 on this hill 920 40 60 for this one as well and that's only 920 there um well how about this one 20 40 60 80 so maybe 990 you know maybe a little bit more than 980 so i would say about 990 985 I mean, either of those numbers would work for the height so 985 990 for Ferro Mountain and we said about 730 for Hunts Ridge. Zoom out here. So we did these two questions. Uh, what is the elevation of intersection? Oh, so Route 1 and US. So we want to figure out that elevation over by the town of Tops Field. And we see the sound, town of Tops Field right there. And there's Route 1 and Route 6. So we want to figure out the elevation at that point right there. And again, we're going to use our, our contour lines and kind of make an educated guess. So um, what, this is 400 right here. So if that's 400, we got 420, 440, 460, right? Uh, 480. So 20, 40, 60, 80, and then there's 500. Yeah, 500 is right there. So it's between, in fact, it's kind of halfway between 480, which is this contour line. And so I make it 490. It's about 490, right? So we would say the elevation of the, that intersection between Tops Field or it, between Route 1 and Route 6 in Tops Field is about 490. That right here. So 490. All right, so then as we go along here, uh, re remember relief here for question seven is the, the difference in elevation between two points. And um, so we want to look at Malcolm Bog and the top of Toma Mountain. Well, in fact, they already tell us <laughs> the answer here. Uh, let's just kind of calculate this here. Let's, can I add a text here? Yeah, here we go. So basically um, we got we got Toma Mountain, which is at nine, 63 feet, right? And we're gonna subtract um, the elevation of Malcolm Bog. And we and it says that it's two contra lines below. So two contra would be 40 feet. So below 600. So that's 560 feet, right? So when you do that, uh, what do we get? Um, well, in fact, I'll let you do the math there. So do the math there, 963 minus 560. So what is it gonna be? basically three, uh, 406, 403 feet, right? So anyways, do the math there and write the answer, um, I guess, right here. And then for question, well, in fact, let's look at it where, where it is on. So we, we're looking at to Toma Mountain and Malcolm Bog. Let's just see where it is on the map. So there's Malcolm Bog here and there's Toma. So Toma has the benchmark at 963 and then you can see yeah we got we're two contra lines below the 600 right for malcolm bog so that's all we're doing there for for that question so you can solve that that problem there and finally question eight what is the relief between the crossroads at tops field so remember we said that crossroads was 490 feet right we said it was 490 and east musqua lake so let's look at east musqua lake Here's East, and it's so here they're telling us that East Musqua Lake is at uh, 368, it looks like. Let's go over here and look at it. Yeah, 368. So 368. So again, the relief for, for question eight, let's add the text box here. So here you would say we have the, the elevation of the crossroads, which we said was 490 feet, right? And we're going to subtract those 368 feet, right? And then you can put the answer. So again, th that's the relief between those two points. All right. So the next problem here is talking about this rule of V. And this is a pretty important rule for, for contra lines. So remember, do not confuse this with the rule of V for geologic maps. For geologic maps, 
when a when a geologic contact crosses a stream, a V-shaped pattern forms. But that V points in the direct in the direction of dip of, of the dip direction. But for contralines, what the V does, the V points in the direction of uphill or upslope, which means uh, the the stream will flow toward the opened end of the V, which is, so think of this as the V, like an upside down V here, right? This would be the opened end of the V. So you can see there's another stream that's coming through here. See the little Vs? So the stream would be flowing down in this direction here, right? So let's take a look at the, again, the Topsfield map here, the, the Topo map, uh, Topsfield map. Uh, look here uh, closely at Woodcock Brook at the north end of Farrell Lake. And based on the elevations of the contour lines that cross Woodcock Brook, that will be, and the general nature of the topography, what does this, uh, which way does the stream flow? So, so it's gonna be to the north of Farrell Lake, Woodcock Brook, let's find that. So there, well, here it is. There's Woodcock. Let's, let's zoom in there. So again, um, I clearly see these Vs. See the Vs right there? So uh, the open of, of the V is, is facing south. So that means that this is higher elevation. You can see the Faroe Mountains up here. So the stream is flowing toward the south. So Woodcock Brook is flowing south because the Vs are pointing, uh, or the closed end of the V is pointing up slope. All right, so let's answer that question. So it's flowing south. And what direction does a stream that drains Malcolm Bog flow? So let's go back to Malcolm Bog, which is right there. Let's zoom in a little bit. And oh, see the Vs? So the Vs are pointing toward the bog. So that means that this stream here is flowing toward the east or southeast here, right? Yeah, because I clearly see these Vs pointing to the west. So the stream is flowing east, southeast. All right, so we did that. Uh, and then what else do we have uh, for question three? For each of these streams, the contour lines that crosses the drainage form distinctive V-shaped patterns and tell us which way the stream is flowing. So, oh, so here in your own words, you wanna suggest a rule. So you can kind of say what I said there is that the stream the stream will flow or the water will flow toward the open end of the V. So, it, so it'd flow basically opposite the closed end, right? Toward the open end of the V, like you see over here. Um, whereas the closed end of the V points upstream. That's another thing you can say as well. Um, so let's look at Pickerill Pond, uh, which is up in the northern part of the map here. Let's see which way that's flowing. So, um, Oh, so the, does it flow away or into the pond? So let's see what, I think Pickerel Pond is right here, right? So let's get in there a little bit and take a look. So, um, well, here I see a, 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 a contour that makes a V right there. See that V? And the V points uphill. So that must, must mean this stream is flowing away from Picker, and obviously that yeah, this is higher elevation, that's lower elevation. Yeah, here's another V right there. The stream is flowing to, in the open end direction, All right? So it's flowing away from, yeah. Uh, here it's called Picarel Pond. But anyways, that's, I think that maybe it's a typo, but at least a typo on my part when I wrote this lab. But that's what I'm really looking for. I'm looking for that pond right there. All right, so um, let's see, yeah. So it'd be that pond. And then for question five, in what direction does Jim Brown Brook flow, right? So that's in the southeast corner of the map. So uh, I think it's the Brown Brook. Uh, I think it's this one right here. Yeah, Jim, it's this one here, Jim. So let's zoom in a little bit. So Jim Brown, it's this one here. Uh, come. So when I look at the V, well, here, let's look at this 400. See that V right there? The V points uphill and the stream. So the stream is flowing south, flowing. And there's another V right there in the contra line. So there's another good V right there. So this the stream is flowing south. All right. So we did uh, Jim Brown. Oh, so now we're looking at question six. Uh, oh, so for, the, for questions six through 10, 
why don't you guys uh, just answer those? Because uh, those are just basically review questions for what we did up here. So I'll let you answer those. Um, and and remember, a contra line is a line of one elevation. So if you if the line if two contra lines cross, then you're telling that that point would be at two. You can't have one point at two different elevations, right? So that all that's saying is that the contra lines may never cross because you cannot have a point at two different elevations. All right. So this next activity deals with actually drawing in the contra lines, and you can see that they've already drawn in the the twenty foot contour and the eighty foot contour, and they want you to do a twenty foot contour interval. And uh, to make these maps, these topographic maps, and drawing these contour lines, and uh, you have to have some data. And one way to get the data is just to go out there with a survey team and and figure out the elevations of all these points. And today we do it with satellite photos uh, um, that can give us estimates of the elevations. It's going to be hard to cover this whole area here. But if we make kind of detail maps, we, someone would go out here and survey this area. Um, but then you'd come back with these points and these, these, these data points. And from these data points, we can draw the contra lines in it. So we want to do an interval of 20 feet. So the contra interval is 20 feet. And they've already drawn the 20 foot contour. So um, I'm going to let you do the 40 foot contour in here, but I'll, I'll do the 60 foot contour because the 60 foot contour is kind of hard. So, um, so there's an 80 foot contour. And also note that when you're drawing these contours, see how they make the rule of V? Remember when a contour line crosses the stream, it makes a V shaped pattern. So you want to draw those Vs in when you're making your contour line. So we know that 60 feet is, is less than 67, but more than 49. Uh, it's kind of almost in the middle here. So uh, I'm going to start drawing this. And I'm going to be pretty close to 68. I'm going to be higher than 50. But as I come up here, I'm going to make a, a rule of V right here. See my rule of V? And then I see that there's a 56 way over here. So I'm going to make this contra line go way up over here. Um, make a rule of V right here. And then go below this 60 foot, really close to that 60 foot. But then I see I have to be less than 74 right above that 59 there. And then I swing around here. I'm going to basically split the difference between 53 and 64, and then make a, a rule of V up over here, and then go below this 62. Then I'm off the map. So now your job is to do the 20 foot contour. So draw that in here. It's going gonna, it's gonna to go somewhere below 35. Oh, no, you're doing the 40, sorry, 40 foot. So the 40 foot will go between 35 and 49 in here, it's gonna, it's gonna parallel or mimic the 20 foot contour. You're gonna go up here, you're gonna make a rule of V here, another rule of V here and swing around here, go through that 40, but make a rule of V here and then come off the map. So I'll let you guys do that on your own. All right, and then um, this next part deals with profiles. So remember the profiles, I, I guess I was talking about those right here, right? They're showing the, the landscape or or um, 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 sideways views uh, of the of the um, of the topography, right? And so the example they give in the in the text, they show you kind of how to how to do it. Here in this case, uh, you would put a piece of paper along that line of section A to A prime, and wherever a contra line crosses that line of section, you would write the elevations. And then you would put your 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 piece of paper on on a graph paper, label the elevations on the, on the side here. In fact, what do we got here? We got a well. These are every hundred feet, but the map has a fifty foot contour interval, right? Yeah, fifty foot contour interval. Um, so then, when you would lay your piece of paper up against the, the graph paper, you would label the elevations, right? So what the first question I think that we asked you to do here is to complete the profile right here, right? And, and I've actually done, done it on this other, I, what I did, I, I, I kind of stretched out the, the map and to the same scale as the profile. And what I've done, wherever a contra line crosses, I come down and so in fact, they've already done it here. So the hilltop is there. And so those are all the elevations. So you would see that you're, you're, you're in this valley because there's a stream in there. You're going up this hill to a little over a thousand feet, right? So a little over a thousand. You're at the hilltop. 
Then you go down into this valley here, down to about, what's that, five, 450, 400, it's almost 400 feet. So you see, I'm not quite down to 400 feet where the stream is. So you go down, then you go up this hill to where the radio tower is here, right? And it looks like it kind of flattens out, or maybe I made a mistake there. But this is what I want you to do. I want you to kind of draw these points up here and then make your profile, right? And that'll give you an idea of how um, we do this. Now, as we're looking over here, the next part is you get, you, you get the opportunity to do one yourself. And here we're looking at... Um, this line of section A to A prime. And we're gonna draw what the landscape profile uh, will look on this map here. So one thing we need to figure out the vertical scale here. So our highest point is maybe not quite 800. And our lowest point is a little bit less than 700. So if we make, let's put a text box here. If we make this elevation, uh, whoops, where's it going? I should do it over here because this is being goofy. Let's make this elevation 600. That's 600 feet. So that would be this. And then let's control copy and let's make this next one up here 700 feet right here. Where are you going? Yeah, make this one 700 feet. And then uh, let's make 800 feet the top. So this is 800. Oh, actually, let's make it 800. 700, 600, right? So, so that means that each box is 10 feet because there's 10 boxes. So between this. Now we can draw our profile. And so it's nice about having the, the graph paper right below the map is you can just draw your, your, your elevation. So let's go to our point here. So note that the, the first contour line that intersects the line of section is at 740, right? 740, 760, 780, 800, because the contour line was 20 feet. So 80, 60, 40. So 740, we come down here. If that's 700, 10, 20, 30, 40, put a dot right there. That's your first elevation. This is 760. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, put a dot right there. And then 780 would be two less than 800, which is right there. And then we don't get quite to 800, but we end up with 780 again over here. Now put 780 right there. And then 760, which should be right about there. And then, well, we don't we don't quite get down to 740, but we get pretty close. But I do want you to indicate that right here is a, is a stream. Let's put the letter S here, just so that we know that there's gonna be a little valley in there, right, for the stream. Then as we go, keep going, so, so this is uh, 80, 60. So 760 is going to uh, repeat over here. So 760, put a dot right there. And then we see 760 again right here. Then 740. Uh, now we get down to 740 down here. So 10, 20, 30, 40. And then 720, which is right about where this bold line is, 20 right there. And then 700 is down here. And note that we don't, we get just a little bit below 700 because 700 is going to repeat over here. So again, right here, let's show that there's another stream. So we show a little valley right there. Okay. Then as we go, now we're, now we're climbing up this hill. So seven. Uh, this what's that 720 is right there, then 740, one, two, three, four, right there, and then 760, which is uh, right there, and then 780 would be right there. So that's the end of our profile. All right, so now we want to con connect the dots and we want to make kind of round hilltops, make that little, little V for the stream channels. 
this is a ridge, so we need to make a little ridge top there. So let's see what this will end up looking something like this. Uh, not quite as high as 800. Come down here, we make a little channel right there. Make our way up and over. And then another channel is going to be right there. And then, then we're going to go off the page here. Oh, sorry, I bumped my phone. All right, so anyways, we'll have to fix that there. But that would be your profile, right? So that would be kind of what this, this landscape would look like. So again, the way I did this, remember, I had to figure out the elevations here to make my vertical scale. And then I, I wherever a contra line crosses that line of section, I marked uh, that elevation on this uh, uh, cross section or profile. All right, so um, the next part deals with the exaggeration. So in many cases, we have to stretch out the, the vertical scale, right, the, the cross section, uh, so that we can see the topography. But for this one, though, this is a one-to-one -one scale for this map here at Hanging Rock Canyon. This is a digital elevation model. And we look here, you know, we could see that there's a pretty steep canyon in here. But when we do it on a one-to-one -one scale, you really don't get the sense of the steepness of that canyon. So if we exaggerate it three times, if we stretch out this scale three times compared to the map scale, because remember, we're comparing the vertical scale to the map scale. So if we, if we make the vertical scale three times that of the map scale, then yeah, you can see, oh yeah, that's a pretty pretty decent sized canyon. It's pretty rugged, right? And here they stretch it out uh, almost nine times, right? So on our map, they want us to um, determine uh, the map scale for the map we just did on the profile and then the profile or the vertical scale. And so it's gonna be the map scale divided by that vertical or profile scale will give us the exaggeration. So let's go back up to that map, which is this one here. So we haven't talked about what this number means here. This number means the, the representative fraction. And so that's really kind of a ratio or um, that representative fraction. And that representative fraction is, I, would, I like to think about it like the shrinkage factor. How much did we shrink the map or the earth down to fit on this piece of paper, right? And so, and, and what it means is, is one unit measured on this piece of paper is equivalent to 24,000 units out in the real world, right? So one to 24,000. So you can say, if I measure one inch on this map, I'm really measuring 24,000 inches out on the ground, out in the real world. So, uh, what we, so that means that, you know, we have those 24,000 um, inches, right? And, and we know that, we have 12 uh, inches per foot, right? So if we divide 24,000 by 12, we get the inches cancel. So, and the feet go to the top, we get 2,000 feet. So the, ver the map scale for this map is one inch is 2,000 feet. Now for our profile, the way I, I drew this or designed this is that each box is one inch, right? So you can see that one inch on, on the profile scale, let's have another text box here, is a hundred feet, right? So here, uh, one inch equals 100 feet. Whereas over here, one inch equals 2000 feet, right? So, so obviously we have a big exaggeration, right? So let's write those numbers down over here. So, we're, so on the mass scale, one inch is 2000. You would write that here. Whereas in fact, we could put two, I have to write this in cursive, cursive otherwise it makes me do several times. And this would be said it was 100 for this one, right? So now take your, your 2000 divided by 100 and you'll get your answer. So put that, put that answer right there. And that just tells you how much you've stretched out uh, this profile or vertical scale compared to the map scale. All right, so... Uh, Oh, here we go. So activity 1.7 deals with these different types of fractions. Here's that representative fraction, that fractional scale. There's also the, the graphic bar scale on the map. And then the verbal scale where you would say one inch equals 10 miles or something, right? Then you can convert between representative fraction and the verbal scale. The other important number here is, uh, um, 
yeah, one mile has 5,280 feet. That's kind of a magic number. We know there are 12 inches in a foot, right? Those are those are some some conversions we'll need to know for between feet, miles, and inches, right? Because remember when we're when we're um, doing a map. In this case, it's um, 125,000. One inch equals 125,000. So we need to convert those inches into, and I guess here we want miles, right? So basically you want to divide that by 12, right? So you, you uh, so 125,000, um, I think we're missing something here. You want to divide that by 12 and then divide it by 5280. So what did I do there? Let's, let's, so let's take that uh, 125, one, two, three, divide it by 12. Now we got a whole bunch of inches, right? And then we divide that by 5280. So 1.97 miles. And that's what I got. I don't know what I was doing up here, but it looks like I might've missed a step. Um, uh, yeah, this is kind of goofy. Do it the, the so the way I did it is is you have you start off with one hundred twenty five thousand. You want to divide that by by twelve inches per foot, right? By the twelve, and then you want to divide that by the fifty two eighty. Ah, I got to do it like this fifty. Ah, well you you know what I mean the fifty two eighty, and then that's how I got the one point nine seven. Um, I think there's a step missing in here. All right, so um, let's look at number one. The map in figure 15 has a vertical, a verbal scale of one inch equals, so figure 15 must be this figure down here. Uh, yeah, figure 15. One inch is 0.25 miles, right? So the map on figure has, uh, convert this verbal scale, so, okay, so now, remember, I. Since I want to have, I want to make these miles into inches, right? I want to make these miles into inches, and so a way I, I like doing this. Let's get rid of these guys here. The way I like to do this is, um, well, I always say was what What do I have? And remember, I have I have um, zero point two five miles, right? So zero point two five miles, and so I put that over here. And then on the other side over here, I say, well, well, what do I, what do I want? And I, I want inches. I want to convert. So I need to convert the miles to inches. So the first thing I'm going to do, I need to make, make a, a couple of ratios over here, right? So remember, I want inches over here. In fact, let's just put the text block and put inch right here. So I want something that's going to be in inches over here, right? So the first thing I do, I, I need to get rid of the miles. So in, I know that in one mile, I have 5,280 feet, right? So let's add it. So I'm going to put the 5,280 feet. And I'm going to put that up here in the, in the numerator because I'm going to, I need to um, uh, uh, multiply 0 0.25 by that, uh, by that number, which means in the denominator, I have the one, the, um, one mile. All right, so I'll put that down here. So now the miles cancel out and I'm going to be in feet. So 5280 times 0.25. But now I got to convert those feet into inches, right? So I know that I have 12 inches per foot. So I put 12, I put I in for inches. That goes up here. And then one foot goes in the, in the denominator. That goes down here. All right, so the feet cancel out. Because remember, 12 inches is one foot. And then my answer is going to be in inches. So so go ahead and do this. So for this, you would take the, um, well, I guess I have it right here. Uh, yeah, times 5280 times 12, and you get your answer right here. And so here, I just kind of set it up with, what do I have? I have these miles, but I want inches, right? So you can see I get rid of my miles. I get rid of my feet. And my answer is going to be in inches, right? And then you're going to get a, a lot of inches. So you go one to that number right here, whatever you get over here, right? So now go ahead and 
convert, you can do this on your own, just following the same method. Here we're converting, again, um, uh, yeah, representative fraction to verbal scales. You're basically doing the same. You're going to be, mul uh, actually, in this case, uh, you're going to be dividing, right? You're dividing um, by 12 and then by 5280. Well, in fact, by 12, just to give, to give you feet. By 12, then 5280, you'd be miles, right? So uh, it's kind of like the problem I did up here. All right, so let's keep going here. And then uh, here for problem three, you're basically doing what I just did right here. You're, you're going to be multiplying, right? You're going to be multiplying because you you have a lot of inches and uh, in 25 miles, right? So you have to multiply by 12, then by 5280. All right, um, and then we come over here. So the last one here, yeah, so this is kind of the summary. In fact, this is the last problem. What you would do here, is where wherever there's a space here, draw the elevation. Note that they only give you one elevation contour here. So use a rule of V's. See these V's? Which way is the stream flowing? Is the stream flowing to the north or is it flowing to the south? Remember the what was your what was the rule you you wrote up ahead about the rule of V's and top and contour lines, right? And then uh, you can see there's another stream that comes in right here as well. So follow those rules, uh, do the depression contours. We talked about those as well. Then I think I have to, I asked you to label uh, Q and Z for the lowest and highest points in the map. And then, yeah, you rule these. So, so anyway, that'll be the last project. I'll let you finish that up. But anyhow, let's stop this and hopefully this will help.